According to Wright, the reception talking at the event. The clip of this detail has gone to time, thanks to Wright's Twitch channel no longer being in existence. But archives from the same Intoki Reddit can be found discussing the clip from Twitch. The Reddit post read, Narcissa talks about sexual assault at Awesome Games Done Quick, to which Haberdasher responds, Sounds like it was some drunk guy. Seriously hate when guys get drunk and think it's okay to fuck around with other guys, trying to be funny, but really they're doing it to get turned on. Like what happened with Terry Crews getting his dick grabbed at that party. By the way, Narcissa said who it was before. I looked up the name and it was someone so irrelevant. I don't even remember. There were even pictures of the alleged assault posted. I'm not sure the actual truth to this event, but I felt it necessary to detail. Whether or not this affected Wright at the time can't be deciphered, because Wright went back to normal gaming after this. Wright posted a compilation on their melee fight to their YouTube channel on August 12th, showing their skill at maining at Zelda. But apparently, there were some other things that led up to signs of right cracking up until the inevitable breakdown that would happen later this year. One was a clip of Wright rage quitting his stream April 22nd, 2015. Do you think it's productive to call me a whiny f it toted out Bundy? What's the point of that? What's the point of saying that? Like great contribution, man. You, oh Jesus Christ! I'm just done with this. Shit. But that was a drop in the bucket of what happened next. On April 23rd, 2015, a game developer and friend of Wright's, Rachel Brick, killed herself by jumping off a bridge. Some accounts of the suicide claim it was due to online abuse, while others tell of her having struggles with being disabled. Rachel's last post to social media was, "Guess I'm dead. Killed myself. Sorry." A Washington Post article for hey, details to up to it. The article read, but in addition to community, Griff also found torment on the internet. At one point, the abuse on 4chan, an anonymous internet message board, became so bad that she left and started using Reddit instead. There's not constant transphobia on Reddit anytime I post, or someone mentions me, like there is here. She explained on April 7th after returning to 4chan, hey, and that same time, Jake. Brick sounded suicidal. The rest of you don't have to worry though, I'm gonna kill myself soon enough, yeah. and you won't have to be bothered by me anymore, she wrote. And her own mother would say she spent a lot of her time in pain from her disabilities. Some insight will be posted years later to Sam and Toki of how this could have affected Narcissa, writing, This was brought to my attention a few months ago, but I've been debating making a post about it because it's extremely disturbing. I'm not going to say who sent me the messages about this. They told me not to say where I got this info and to pretend I found it all myself. But I will say they came from a very reliable source. But like I said, I've been reluctant to post about it because it's so disturbing and I don't personally know much information about it. So I'm just going to repeat what this person told me. The theory is this was the real cause of Narcissa. Cosmo and this girl were extremely close. The source provided me with multiple Twitter posts hey, and other pieces of evidence to back this up. This girl became so depressed and ended up committing suicide. This happened while Cosmo was in the middle of trying to competitively speedrun Windbreaker HD. And when this girl died, Cosmo didn't stream for days. When he came back, he never did a serious speedrun attempt again. This lines up to right around the time he started doing the weird streams like no face cam, no mic streaming only once or twice a week instead of every day. This event marks the beginning of the decline. This story has been kept secret for a while by a lot of people. Anyway, that's all I've heard about it. I don't know how accurate it is. I'm just reporting what others have told me. And Wright would have another hit to their existence a few months later when they attended the Nintendo World Championship. June 14, 2015. This would be the event many people would think changed Wright for the worst. Wright was invited by Nintendo to attend the event along with 15 other players. Wright managed to reach the final round of the competition, hey, where he faced off in the game Super Mario Maker against someone who is mostly unknown in the community, John Nunes. This was the final game of the championship, and Wright choked. And Wright choked. Yeah. It looks as if they couldn't even get past the first obstacle. It was a crushing defeat in front of a crowd of thousands of people and the director of Nintendo, Shigeru Miyamoto. Hey, 
Dinger. Dinger. After this defeat, according to people who watched right at the time, Wright's dream became different. There was less commentary and less faith in me. So, it is hard to check the validity of that, as Wright's Twitch is no longer in the Hey, it's gone! They did go through their YouTube channel, and during that time, there was a lot of Super Smash Brothers gameplay, with no commentary or webcam. But sometime after the crushing defeat at the Nintendo World Championship, Wright and Adrian had split up after the alleged year of infidelity by Adrian. This breakup occurred sometime in July 2015. Adrian posted a statement to Facebook writing, This is gonna come out one way or another, so I'm just gonna come out and say it. Cosmo and I aren't together anymore. It's mutual. We're in different places in our lives, and it's best that we're separate from now. I originally was going to wait to say anything, but unfortunately, people are pushing, especially since I haven't been around the past few days and I feel uncomfortable with the idea of lying to friends for weeks on end. My circumstances are more dire than his. I have a lot of family issues to take care of at home, and I would have had to move back here regardless of whether or not we separated. Perhaps down the line we'll get back together. We're both still on extremely good terms with each other, and there are zero hard feelings. Sometimes these things just happen, and we're both at peace with it. I feel obligated to say this, because I don't know. Some people just don't know how to not be shit about these situations. But don't make a big deal out of this. Don't go tweeting about it. We're basically telling people, if they ask, because they will at some point. I had to move out to help my family and we're separate for now, which is true. The last thing I want is getting sh** over this, even though it's not even an issue for either hey, of us in the first it's place. Moody. Also, no, I don't want to talk about it. Don't message me asking me, oh my god, what happened, please explain. Like, I really just want to get my sh** together. I don't have time for this, LMAO. It would actually be 100% appreciated if everyone backed off me until I settled in at home, because I have much more important to deal with. And the last appearance of Right as Cosmo happened on August 3rd, hey, 2015. And then, after silence, on November 2nd, 2015, Wright returned, but was no longer Cosmo. This was the day that Wright came out to the world as her new self, Narcissa Wright. An article that was posted on Medium tells the story of this coming out event from a trans perspective. Writing, Narcissa Wright is a household name in the speed gaming world. She democratized speedrunning by co-creating Speedruns Live, where anyone of any skill level can find community and run games. Then became perhaps the most famous speedrunner by absolutely destroying the Ocarina of Time record in a video that brought the intricacies of speedrunning to the masses. And on November 2nd, 2015, she posted an innocuous photo on Twitter of a couple of pill bottles, a photo that sent a very clear message to a very small but perceptive audience. To us it read, I am a transgender woman. There were signs of Cosmo being trans before this announcement. Right. Her friends said it was a long time coming, and Narcissa had been painting her nails prior to this, which caused the audience to question her identity. The name that Wright had chosen was already questionable. Narcissa is the female version of the Greek name Narcissa. The Greek hey, myth about Narcissa is the origin of the word narcissism. For Narcissus died due to his own infatuation with his beauty. The reaction to this coming out was pretty mixed. The Medium article that I quoted earlier details on this mixed reaction. Yeah. Writing, Narcy's first dream after coming out was a few days later. She'd set her chat on Twitch to subscriber only in an attempt to keep out the trolls. This meant you had to donate $5 for the ability to post messages others could read. That first stream had about 20 or 30 curious queer people like me who bought into chat, plus a few dozen longtime subscribers who stopped by to congratulate her and show that their support wasn't going anywhere. There were a couple hundred viewers total. It was active, vibrant, wonderful, and supportive. Just a thing I'm sure we both needed during those scary first steps into the public eye. As time went on, total viewership dropped with 600 becoming 500, becoming 400. Narcy took things in stride, memeing about how many followers on Twitch and Twitter she'd lost. But it was obvious she was taking the exodus of some of her former fans for now, but along with the shedding of portions of her old audience, the queer whispered network that permeated the gaming scene online gradually spread the word. The most famous speedrunner alive was one of us, even as Narcissa's total viewership dropped 
the number of subscribers and donors rose. And every time she streamed, nearly every day, a core group of regulars was there to chat with her and each other. Meanwhile, on the image board, SRG, posters were posting mean comments about Narcissa's return, writing comments like, Cosmo is full of people, my lease is ending, and I'll be moving. Dude, you live with your parents on your childhood bedroom. You're getting disowned for decisions. Cosmo's voice was so chill. Now I hear it, I just feel sad. It's gay as fuck. Holy sh**, what happened to her voice? Cosmo just looks like a male school shooter right now, to be quite honest. Another person writes, I don't agree with Cosmo becoming a trick, but I do feel sorry for him. That voice sounds closer to James Earl Jones than it does to even the manliest woman. And there were even posts on Reddit commenting on the coming out, getting positive upvotes. The one that I found wrote, What the f*** happened? First he quit speedrunning to play the sh** new Smash and Meme Maker without any cam or some emo black and white sh**. And now he's pretending to be a girl with a f***ing retarded name. And not only is his chat sub only yeah. and filled with Tumblr facts, his f***ing VODs are sub only too. He even took all the speedrunning stuff out of his bio. Now the only thing that he'll be known for is being a trick, and no one will ever care about any of the actual cool stuff he did before. Cosmo, the great Zelda speedrunner, reduced to a nobody with a sub only chat filled with nothing but Hugbox facts talking about gold and telling Narcy how brave she is, to which one person responded, Woo! I'm glad I came here and found some people speaking honestly about this, lol. Weirdly, I've seen the exact quote, good on her, many times in all the comments elsewhere about Cosmo slash Narcissa. Good on, just odd. Again, as I said, the reaction to Narcissa's coming out was extremely mixed. Some embracing the new identity and many memeing it. Narcissa seemed to take it all in stride at first. Not only that, there were some artist time lapses she did in September 2015, which showed off her art skills, which to be honest, she's a fairly talented artist. Narcissa eventually abandoned her original channel, retitling it Former Cosmo Speedruns, and started a new channel titled Narcissa Wright in October 2015. But the first signs of the cracked mentality of Narcissa from years upon years of speedrunning and the loss of a friend and a girlfriend showed on December 18th, 2015, in a video she posted called All Categories Are Arbitrary, where she recites poetry she wrote about speedrunning Zelda. All the categories are arbitrary. Finished painting my nails, doing my makeup, put on some mascara, roll up my thigh highs. All the categories are arbitrary. It was received negatively, and it was not what her audience, except very diehard supporters, wanted to see. I would assume that at least a decent amount of gamers would be okay with the change in appearance and tone of Narcissa if she continued to play games and explain them to the audience. But they did not want to hear deep poetry about Zelda speedrunning. As OT any percent shifts back to VCJ, my mind wanders to the S adapters and to the virtual console that doesn't crash when Gim is performed. This was all setting up to Narcissa having a mental health crisis in front of thousands of people. Narcissa uploaded another update December 30th called Vlog 1230 2015 and got ratioed on this as well. This video was an announcement that she had created a website to compare playthroughs for her Mario Maker levels. Comments are currently turned off and 2015 ends on a sort of sour note. move. Another tragedy begins 2016. A Kotaku article was posted January 11, 2016 titled One of the World's Best Speedrunners Can't Speedrun Anymore. The article detailed how Narcissa could not speedrun anymore due to hand problems, most likely carpal tunnel. In one section, the interviewer asked Narcissa why she knew the way to to which Narcissa responded, I think it's all the years of playing games, but it got bad when Smash Review came out. I think I'm at 11,000 I played for long sessions. I was playing Melee at the time too, and that's even more demanding on my hands. And I played along, it hurts a lot, and it hurts for a long time afterward. It's been a huge problem. It made me feel like maybe I can't get back into speedrunning as much as I want to with Castlevania. I don't have health insurance right now. I'm trying to get that settled. I walked into a physical therapy place, but they told me I need a doctor's note and insurance. I want to get that figured out in 2016. Further, in the article, nurses speaks of how she had lost a lot of her audience due to her not speedrunning anymore. Running at one point, a lot of people don't like my content now, but that's fine. They can go watch something else. But it wasn't fine, as you will see as we go further. But Narcissa continued to be optimistic throughout the article, saying that she was thinking of creating her own game. 
She also talked about the reaction to her transition, saying, Yeah, the internet is definitely not always a nice place, but I felt like this was a long time coming. I just sort of kept pushing it back and pushing it back. I finally decided to accept myself. A lot of people do not understand, and a lot of people leave really mean comments all the time. It's kind of draining, but at the same time, I have zero regrets. I know I'm doing the right thing. People can either get over it, or they can go watch someone else. And in another section says, Yeah, there's a lot of that. I got a huge surge of support initially, and it still kind of continues. But there's also the huge negative crowd, which you can see in YouTube comments and on various other websites. People will try to drag down others for some reason. Maybe they just don't understand it. It's okay. I still get a lot of support from a lot of people, and I have close friends I talk to. I just feel good about everything. One thing Narcissus said in the interview was pretty telling of what was going to come. In a section about her shift in content, she says, I'm definitely taking it one step at a time. I don't plan on going and doing something because that's what everyone wants to see. I know people want to see certain things out of me, but I want to focus on what I'm actually passionate about. Maybe that's kind of ungrateful. It's like, I'm only going to do what I'm passionate about. Now please pay for my existence. Maybe that's super entitled, but I feel like I'm at my best when I can work on things I'm actually passionate about. To be honest, it was a fairly positive article. Narciso reacted reasonably to the hate she was receiving and seemed level-headed at the time. It was pretty terrible that her health was deteriorating and taking away the skills hey, which has been for years perfected. Speed down. Despite the positivity expressed in the article, Narciso was not doing fine in the face of negative comments. She expressed this in a short vlog she uploaded February 2016, where she said she had to turn off comments on YouTube due to how much they hurt. I had to disable comments on my mother video, and I just wanted to let you know that that upset me. And it makes me feel hurt because it feels like if I show vulnerability, I don't pay attention. But if I work on cool stuff, it's like I don't get any credit for it. And says that she is insecure about her voice. I'm self-conscious about my voice. And that YouTube makes her sad. She posted another vlog on April 2nd, expressing more sadness. Here she informs her audience that she is four months into hormones, which she feels good about. And I feel good about that. I've been kind of depressed lately. But says she has nothing to do now except to get high and sleep. I just thought she had spent a lot of time sleeping, but it was like very hard. So. Narcissa's depression of the online comments manifested themselves on April 7th when she deleted her quick channel with over hey, 100,000 followers, albeit only temporarily, as it was reactivated on April 10th. At the time, she cited that this was due to the online abuse and criticism. Uh -huh. She wrote on Twitter, Just so tired of the sh I get from people. Total lack of respect makes me want to give up on the world. Today feels like the worst day in the I want to die. Painlessly, please. I hated the early suicide mission, but they all seem cumbersome. I don't think I'd actually go through with anything, but it sure is nice to fantasize about not having to deal anymore. She also expressed her depression in a YouTube video that she uploaded on April 8th. In this video, she expresses that she feels constrained by her past self. I just, I don't know, maybe I just want something to scream constantly being judged to my past self. In this moment of my life, it's not easy to do. Obviously, I'm going to be able to do this. And details her addiction to reading all the negative comments about her. It's just like reading all the garbage. I'm like addicted to reading garbage comments. YouTube comments, 4chan, and Reddit. There's a lot of places where people talk about me. Hey, it's real! And how tired she is in speedrunning. Everyone across me is speedrunning and like, speedrunning is like a dog, like going for records. It's just like this endless repetition of this simple, it's like simple, it's so stupid, oh my god. She also discusses on how she believes she is better than everyone. So I mean, everyone is good, I just feel like I'm ahead of everyone, everyone's behind me, I'm like right ahead of everyone. Really, really not for the nurses in the The really sad thing was how she told Waking up, getting high, and reading mean comments. And then she hints on what is to come. 
pay for me to sit around and get high and complain about my life and read negative things she would say about me. Her Twitch did return on April 10th. And on April 14th, she uploaded another vlog where she talked about speedrunning. The video was her talking about how much she does see speedrunning positively, but has grown tired and bored of it. There's a lot of goodness in speedrunning. It's just when it comes down to devoting my life for one day, It will end only in frustration and despair. Narcissa had lost purpose in her life and only had negativity to dwell on. She would continue to stream, but the streams were not viewed positively and were often heard as doing nothing and talking to chat about the project. On May 1st, 2016, she did a stream panel recording. This stream is just kind of a great example of what Narcissa's content would change into for the year to come. And even those who cared about her transition wouldn't care about these type of things. Check on the phone. Oh. So I moved my bed over here. Which is basically just um blankets. And then I threw all my clothes off the camera also. Despite all that, I still have my own struggles, and my own struggles are still real, and it's not like it's not real. It's just a lot of nothing. Things most people don't care about. Narcissa would get 8,000 people watching her for her talented gameplay, and now she was just complaining and talking about her life. And to be honest, it really wasn't anything inspiring or insightful for people who maybe care about trans issues. It was vacant, vapid, and dull. I'm still sort of expecting to die in this human body and like... I don't know. And get buckled up. That is what Narcissa will become for years after. Vacant, vapid, dull, and whiny. But her no. sadness did not stop no. with egotistical views no. on her own legacy. On the 5th of May, there was a clip of her saying that she was way smarter than everyone else. I'm such a stupid asshole. I'm just like way smarter than everyone. I'm way ahead of everyone, more educated than everyone. And I keep up with everything. Like, and no one even knows about it. Like, I do so much reading and research. Fuck everyone. Fuck everyone. Anyone who thinks I'm not worth it. about generally nothing to a crowd but on june 15 2016 she actually had a positively received stream where she reacted to e3 and the new pokemon and Zelda game it was obvious there was still fans who wanted to see her involved in gaming and it was obviously a good thing to have someone who understood gaming as intimately as narcissa did commenting on games but then she just continued to stream nothing for example on july 18th she streamed something she called a stream talk, and this was just boring. Feelings of like irrelevancy feels like I'm irrelevant, and I was really, I was really upset because I feel like all I've done my entire life is just follow my passion. Fuck. So like. Damn it. I don't know why it has to be so different now compared to how it used to be. The stream was just a whole lot of nothing. <sighs> I'm doing pretty well. One 
moment that stood out as a kind of a meme to a lot of Narcissa lore followers, aka people who followed her to see what a show she had become, was a clip from a stream on August 8, 2016. At the beginning of the stream, Narcissa talked about how she contacted the company, Soylent Green, for a sponsorship. It didn't go well. Okay, so here's the first three emails of the exchange. So this is me to Soylent. I heard, I heard Soylent sponsors gamers. That's really cool. I pretty much live off Soylent right now. Haha. Ha. And um, I don't know how the sponsorship thing works or whatever, but that seems really cool. I stream on Twitch and have done a lot of amazing gaming things and want to continue to do more amazing things. I think being sponsored would be kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know what being sponsored even means, but I was told to reach out and so here I am. That's the first email for me. Okay, so I get a response back. Hello, I'm Connor, Solid's brand marketing manager. Currently, we sponsor a few streamers, and there's four links. Basically, we would want to know your average stream numbers, and if we can hammer out a monthly cost of product that works for all of us, so we can set up a streamer partnership. How does that sound to you? Um, so that's the response to me, and then I was like like oh they want to know about my stream numbers so here's the email that i sent back to them i was like ah my average stream numbers dot 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 i used to be the biggest speedrun streamer on twitch averaged 5,000 plus with zelda speedruns but i had to take a step back and reevaluate what i enjoy about streaming doing a lot of self-reflection so i spent a year playing smash wii u came out as trans lost, lost most of my viewer base I probably get like 200 average now, tiny numbers. Although I feel like after I get my new apartment set up, I can really get going on my passion projects and the numbers will rise again. You probably didn't want to hear that. I'm a spoiled She does as she pleases and I refuse to go back and play something I don't enjoy anymore. So that was the email I sent to them. People began to speculate that Narcissa was living on a diet of HRT, toilet, oh. and weed which people thought was the cause of her sickly skeletal appearance. Narcissa was looking quite unhealthy and was acting sad and the poor diet was most likely a contribution to that. Later in the month of August, she did a stream August 27th where she just sang for like 30 minutes. The disco heaven. This was not the content that people wanted to see from the former speedrun god. Not getting the loving support she wanted, she uploaded a video on August 30th, trying to tell those off who had expectations for her. Don't tell me what to do. This video was then used as her channel trailer at the time, which the channel trailer is a video that welcomes people to the channel when they click on it, and that would be kind of a shock for anyone wanting to see what happened to their favorite speedrunner. Narcissa's life was paid for by her fans, and she was openly oh antagonizing them. This is something that doesn't work for any content creator, and yeah. is a common theme in popular Isolite's downfall. And looking at the image board, SRG, sometime around this time, at least according to posts from August 31st, Narcissa received her first ban from Twitch for singing copyrighted music and Twitch over to YouTube. She had apparently sang Lady Gaga for three hours straight. Surely that was what her Twitch subscribers were getting over. September 5th brings another sad random video from Narcissa. She did a brief stream call, cut off from the hating video, where she talked about how much the negative comments affected her. I feel like it's just too damaging. It's too damaging to be like constantly confronted by people constantly. And like everyone trying to get me to bend to their will, I can't do that. I have to like be free from that. I have to. And it's really hard not to like, subject myself to it because it's like directly about me. And how she's now there all the time and not fully free. Did Helen have good streams? I feel like I have to be of use. I mean, it's kind of nice being very controlled, but I feel like I need to be more loose and basically just like feel more free to express myself. 
And sadly, she also talks about how she can't gain weight thanks to her hands and her carpal tunnel. I mean, okay, I'm struggling with my hands, like carpal tunnel apparently. I don't know. I don't even know if, I, if that's the right diagnosis, but um, yeah, like that's that. Like, this problem prevented me from like making some. Hey, it's Sabino. And discusses how all these people who are former fans now just want to see them fall. These people don't care about me at all. They want to see me suffer. They want to see me fall. It pleases them to see me fall. It pleases them to think of me as a cup. And I'm not a cup. I'm not. But at least on a positive note, she talks about how she wants to prove herself that she is still awesome. Maybe I respect them as humans. Maybe I recognize some of them as like my lost audience from the past and want to show them that I'm still awesome. And people think that I'm not. Narcissa did prove she was still awesome to her audience when she uploaded a video on September 7th titled Cuddling a Pillow, which I'm joking because it was a creepy clip of a stream of Narcissa molesting Bentacore and trying to look cute. Yeah, I don't get why people are tired of her content. That was sarcasm. On September 13th, the late YouTuber Apollo Legend posted a video on Narcissa titled The Downfall of Narcissa Right. The video opens up with Narcissa talking about how her followers are demanding I noticed that um, my Twitter follow count is down to 40.0. Hey, okay, and it's gonna drop below 40k like soon. People are just leaving. <laughs> people are just leaving. It's been 10 months, over 10 months of people just clicking unfollow a lot. It was the same on Twitch though. It was like 180k, 150k. And like probably a bunch of those accounts were inactive, so I think it's like thirty thousand people click the unfollow button. Like, thirty thousand, like, thirty thousand people don't believe in me. Thirty thousand people just like, don't feel that like I'm worth it. Apollo Legend was supportive of Narcissus' transition, but expressed that he understands why people do not like him. Same day as the video, Narcissa posted about her income on Twitter, writing, I have $14,800. I spend $24,800 a year, not including taxes. Income on Twitch is $1,000 a month. Current income is $135 a month daily. And then continue hey, it's her hopes about her claim to fame in the Zelda community, writing, The sky may be falling on me in seven months, but Breath of the Wild comes out in six months. Naru, Goddess of Wisdom, my faith, Hey, it's Goose! The glory was far away from her, and on September 15th, Narcissa streamed a video titled, I Really Did, which received nothing but negativity, and she looked completely distraught and disheveled from the get-go. The next day, Narcissa received a thread on the infamous gossip man, KB Bond, which the opening of the thread I feel like this thread has been overdue. Cosmo is a former speedrunner who held a few records and helped popularize speedrunning, but has recently fallen into obscurity after transitioning from male to female and quitting speedrunning, replacing it with streaming themselves, freaking out about people trying to control them and cuddling pillows. Due to this, they have mostly alienated their former audience and are running mostly on funds from when they were popular. They say that they don't have any plans of either getting a real job or trying to make their audience happy. So if things keep going like they are, things don't look so good for them. Due to this, Wright's girlfriend, Adrian, left them when they came out. Her Twitter link. There's some talk about their girlfriend, Julie Ann, or the influence for them to make out. But shit like this is 
hard to prove. She looked very tumble in her Basically, every sh SJW center had some kind of article about them coming out and the harassment they received. Narcissa almost immediately noticed the thread, tweeted, nice thread girl, with a link to the thread. We just emphasized that she spent a lot of the time looking at negativity on herself. Narcissa then continued a meltdown on Twitter, waiting, oh, yeah, at Sugo Sumi, yeah, laugh at me, at Zelfri, my streams are worthless and not worth watching. Okay, Twitch deleted, Discord deleted, also Twitch subs was all my income, so I have no income now, GG. Maybe when I run out of money, I'll end myself, going for a walk. I'm crying so much. If Narcissa did delete her Twitch and Discord at this time, it didn't last long. Oh long my god, didn't come find on. It anywhere else. A few days later, on the 18th, after two days of discussing Narcissa, Kiwi Farm noted the little views Narcissa was getting, writing. Just saw this as well. Also, 44 viewers. On Twitch, she had thousands. Narcissa continued to stream. She would stream hours upon hours with nothing content because of her collapsing mental health and inability to gain due to her hands. On the 25th of September, someone on Kiwi Farm summed up what had been happening right now. Narcissa's recent streams have been outright weird and depressing. It seems like all they do is sit around for hours, get high, and mope to stream chat. Eventually, people from V and Pull arrive, and from there, the stream turns into a video feed of Narcissa reading people sh post about them on 4chan slash in the stream chat. Sometimes, they even put up the threads on the stream. This can't be healthy. I'm interested to know what they're going to do once the finances run dry. What are they even doing? doing for money right now. They're not raking in donations like they used to. Back on Twitch. And the ad revenue on YouTube has to be next to nothing. Are they really living off savings with no income? Will turning tricks in dirty back alleys be part of Narcissa's story? Only time will tell. On the 29th of September, Narcissa finally created her own Patreon. And one of her tears was rather bizarre. For $50, she would eat a soylent food bar that was part of the bad bat that got people sick. She would stream about these tears the same day. I'm just gonna make you say that last night we launched the Patreon to support me and at the moment it's almost tongue in cheek. It's almost like this deep satire. Uh, also, she discussed how her wrists were still fucked up and she couldn't game and had to find other ways to entertain the audience. Um, I can't even play games much because of my wrists, so my wrists are so messed up. I played a bit of Smash yesterday and like I could tell my left wrist was sort of like kind of sore even after not playing that much. The relationship between Kiwi Farm and Narcissa began to be parasitic at this point. Also on the 29th, Narcissa, according to Post, got bummed out from reading the Kiwi Farm's thread the night before and had to stop playing Smash so she could mope around her. And on September 30th, she began to respond on Twitter directly to Kiwi Farm. October comes and Narcissa's mental state continued to be questionable. On the first of the month, she tweeted, I oh. can't sleep. My brain freaks out when I'm half asleep. I think it's partially from halting cannabis suddenly. Clonazepam helps though. But Narcissa did soon get 28 patrons and was doing okay, I guess? But then, on October 14th, she posted two videos titled Pathetic Video and Pathetic Video 2. The first pathetic video was 19 minutes of Narcissa whining about life, unsure of what she should do, and lamenting about her need for life. Um, I don't know. She was trying to, like, live. Like, I don't know. I got into a quick on because I paid my taxes recently. Hey, it's Foley! Um, there's not that many months left before. It feels like I'm like, running really low. And she expressed that she felt defeated and really focused on how she needs love and attention and how people do not like her. I don't know. Oh, hey, it's Danzel! Okay, I know. Okay. I know I can't get people to love me. I've been spending months trying to get people yeah. to love me and they won't. Whatever I've done lately, people. People just like attack the negative parts of everything that I do and they don't focus on any of the positives. So there's like this bias yeah. going around. And then there's some people who like support me no matter what. I just don't even feel the love when they support me. God. I think I just crave love in like large numbers, like large quantities of love and money too. It is very apparent that she thrives off of any attention. The second pathetic video is a 28 second video where, well, see it for yourself. Oh, please support my Patreon, please, please. 
I just need another 1500 per month, please. Please support me, please. Please support me. Donate to my Patreon below. Please. Please give me money, please. Please. Later that day, Marcissa went live for an hour and 29 minutes in a video titled, We Live. This video is so similar to every other stream, but notably, when people tell her to get a job, she curses the audience. Well, yeah, she was telling me, like, everyone, everyone's like, get a job, and it's like, fuck you. And then said, we should all be graced by her presence. Okay, what's my job? I'm a seer. That's my job. You were graced with my presence. She also admits that she purposely tries to antagonize Chuck for attention. Hey, it's cute. And yeah, I'm speaking highly of myself right now. I'm trying to like steer both people and like ah, make people attack me, make them attack me and be like, that's it worth nothing. Ah, ah. I'm like inciting the crowd, I'm trying to make people like get more insightful. Yeah. It was just hours of narcissism being a narcissist. Pathetic, entitled, insecure, yet egotistical. Expected the money to stay there. And that Narcissa is essentially manipulative to her audience by trying to grift money and views from people by acting sad and pathetic. Let's talk about some manipulation. Let's talk about some of the manipulative stuff that Narcissa is doing. Now, myself, I find that a lot of these tactics are very transparent. I didn't find myself falling for them. But I get the feeling that a lot of people will. Because a lot of people, they look at the Hey, it's Shadow! And they see it at face value. They take it and they understand only the very, very basic components. So I'm going to break down some of the, the disgusting, manipulative stuff that comes out of narcissism and the things that she does in this video. One of the most obvious and one of the most effective, I would say, the ones that actually bothered me a little bit, was the way that she'll she'll touch on a bit of criticism that she knows she's going to see. And she'll touch on it very quickly, she'll say, like, oh, you know, uh, people have told me I should get a job. Anyway. It's obvious that Scott's a bunch of people like this. And I promise you, if she started doing near daily, not, not specifically daily, just any sort of active content, that she would get so much support. So much. She would have people. She would have hundreds, if not thousands of people, no matter what she was doing. And it would be just fine. And there's plenty of people who wish that they could be in her situation so that they could actually utilize what she had. Instead, she chooses to throw that away and, and to do this pitiful thing she's doing here. And she's very right when she calls it a pathetic video. And November 2nd, 2016 brings Narcissa's one year anniversary of her transition, which she announced on Twitter with a photo hey, it's gone. And Narcissa continued to post nonsensical short videos. The next day, she posted a 16 second video called You Disgust Me, where I believe she thought she was being deep in the face of people commenting on what she was presenting to the public. Come on, her, dude. You disgust me. You disgust me. You disgust me. 
You disgust me. You disgust me. You disgust me. You disgust me. You disgust me. You disgust me. Oh. Nurses have posted another self-pitying video the next day, on the 4th. She posted a video titled, Emo Girl, where she immediately starts the video talking about her anxiety. I like this anxiety disorder. And throughout the video, complains about her life and describes the audience she cultivated as toxic. <laughs> Free to go. Narcissa talks down to the audience and talks of how great she is. The landscape that I'm within. My digital landscape populated by you people. You people. A bunch of memers. You think I'm a joke. I'm actually brilliant. I stand by that. Now nobody deserves to understand her, and then proceeds to tell her audience to go away. So, instead of just bullying me, you should lay off. You should stop, and you should go away. Narcissa continued to complain about money, and on the 6th of November tweeted, All these speedrunners trying to make end meet through Twitch sub and donations, trying to lecture me with their financial advice, to which someone by the name of Big Ryan responds, They aren't making pathetic videos begging for money on YouTube though. To which Narcissa responds, Those videos are a high art form, certainly more interesting and thought provoking than Ocarina of Time, Arbor Chair, Category Percent, to be To which the response was, People aren't that into high art though. It can be enriching, but it's also meant it's draining. Narcissa responds, It is mentally straining, probably, yeah. I understand a lot of people want just a comfy experience. Somebody else writes, A lot of these people are just trying to help by sharing from their perspective. There's a fine line between help and lecture. And Narcissa responds, Their perspective is a status quo. I refuse to fall in line. To which someone by the name Light hey, writes, When will you accept that you're not special or unique? You are not one of a kind. You are a dot in a sea of people. Narcissa responds, I am one of a kind. To which Light responds, Nobody else thinks so, though. You need to face reality and accept you're just as uninteresting as the rest of us. Move on. Meanwhile, in the background, there was Leo from Narcissa's Discord, a remarkable discussion that they were sifting through the hate to protect the person they set. Narcissa, the one mod, commented that Narcissa didn't give a fuck about them, to which Narcissa responded, Sorry you can't pay for my affection, dude. To which they responded, I did more than pay my sister. And the entitled Narcissa responded, You did, but I don't owe you anything. So, Narcissa will not provide attention, entertainment, or anything. She really believed she deserved money with nothing in return for just being the legendary original speedrunning Isola. Narcissa then tried to be the victim and claimed that the paying mod, Cypherson, was threatening her because reasons. This whole Discord leak spoke wonders for this continuing growth of egotistical attitude despite Narcissa feigning insecurity on stream. Narcissa got another form of criticism on November 11th from a vertically challenged streamer, Destiny, who made a video called Some Thoughts on Transgender, where Destiny discussed his problems with the trans community. The two problems that I have with the trans community are one, and I could be totally wrong here, this might be confirmation bias because the only people that are vocal end up being the ones that are a little crazy and it seems like a lot of trans people have like a lot of other mental problems. Like, it seems to be pretty rare that I find somebody who happens to be trans and I just find that out, transgendered, and then um, rather than like a transgender person has a lot of mental health issues. But maybe that's just like in general. Like I guess like I'm thinking of people like Cosmo hey, slash hey. Narcissa clearly has a lot of mental problems going on. And mentions Narcissa by name. 
Um, so, for instance, if you look at the stuff going on with Narcissa, Narcissa is from the head. She has severe, severe problems with her life, mentally, right? It's very obvious when you watch it. Um, but I don't think that she's ever going to get what she needs because she, because she's trans, she has an infinite amount of positively, overwhelmingly positive support hey, from the trans Joey. community, which I think is disgusting. Narcissa responded to this the next day, saying that she is indeed mentally ill. I just wanted to make a quick response to Destiny's video where he talked about me a bit and said that I have like severe mental issues and shit and it's like yeah I have like an anxiety disorder and like things are kind of rough and um, it's been a really fucking hard year. 2016 has been a really fucking hard. We've gone through a lot of shit and I've been like losing my fan base and everything and like trying to cope with like my wrist problems and just like figuring out what to do and uh, it's been like a rough fucking time so uh, I ended up reading a lot of hate and like, getting high all the time and that was bad and I've since quit getting high all the time and I don't do that anymore and uh, I've been hanging out more I IRL instead of being so isolated so that's more productive and I'm working on something more productive I think than random streaming both so uh, eventually I'll be able to share that but in the meantime I'm sort of just like working on the Jeez, like, come on. I also said that I get my hormones off the internet or like I bought them originally off the internet or whatever and it's like not true at all I went through Howard Brown in Chicago and like, he froze! Okay, whatever. Hey, it's here! 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 Okay, whatever. Hey, it's Then on the 21st of November, Narcissa made another vlog, complaining about other speedrunners. I think I have a lot of baggage from the last, like, five years. Um, anyway, yeah. There's like a lot of speedrunners who don't like me, and that, that was true even when I was speedrunning though. That was like not just the case after I stopped, but during it, there was like jealousy uh, with my stream, and I felt like my success was a result of hard work, and it was deserved. And then whining about money. But I'm also freaking out about like money. And after that, she posted another short clip to her YouTube, singing a song. I'm not here to start a fire, I'm here to keep you warm. Five days after this, on the 26th, Narcissa posted her most iconic video entitled, I'm out of my mind. And yeah, sis was out of her mind. My mind, I'm out of my mind, out of my fucking mind, out of my mind, out of my mind, it didn't say the best poet. The last month of the year brings absolutely nothing of importance. The last month of the year of 2016, aka December, Narcissa returned to streaming on Twitch, but we uploaded the video back to YouTube. The first one I watched is from December 16th titled, I Feel Like Crying. This video was considered a comeback stream on Twitch. I don't know when it was streamed on Twitch, only when it was uploaded on YouTube. But the video consisted of her trying to gain pity by complaining about her life. I've been doing okay. Today's been today's been bittersweet. It's like it's my plan to come back to Twitch or whatever, but also I feel nervous and awkward. And I I get reminded of a couple of things that have been bothering me about my streaming this year. And then talking about her extended ego. Um, Phoenix, alright. I think the last thing Phoenix said to me was kind of weird, but I was like flashing my ego. I f okay, here's how it works, right? I flash my ego, and then people try to tear, tear me down, and they can't resist. Hey, this is exactly. just how humans work. This is just like human behavior. It's not any one person. This is, like, this is just like human nature. I don't know, it's weird. And how she craves love. And numbers, numbers and metrics, and a slave to the metrics. I hey, it's Suzuki! I love large quantities. I desire <laughs> bigness. But throughout the video, where she claimed to be depressed, she also started to get happy, talking about the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild, which this game is going to be very important because she believes this game is going to trigger her redemption. It's going to be really cool. Hey, it's Russell Kim! I'm glowing. <laughs> I feel like I've. I feel like I've been more expressed. This is my best stream so far on Twitch. Um, out of the streams I did today, since I've returned. This is my best stream because I've been the most expressive. So, you can see how I'm doing magic, and I feel like I'm kind of doing the magic right now. I'm just kind of able to like, do this. 
But um, yeah, Breath of the Wild when it comes out, seeing the wild development and like the potential for several time series, or even virtual as well, I'm interested in that, and I'm interested in potential categories and shit and different things you can do with the game. I'm just like really excited about the game in general. And merciless like here for you, with a nothing string, lying in bed, and doing absolutely nothing of interest. But the gist of 2016, from what I gathered from Narcissa, is that she wanted to continue to be loved and adored, but she wasn't just speedrunning as possible, but she wasn't doing well mentally, and refused to work on herself, huh. and therefore hated her audience now, for not liking every stupid thing she did. We moved into 2016, two years after her transition. She does numerous six plus hour streams, but I did try to go through the key points that stuck out to me during my deep dive and to what has become of the infamous speedrunner Narcissa Wright since her rise to fame. Narcissa started 2017 with a New Year's Eve stream where she drank tiny wines. Not being alone, uh, not shaming myself in the basement, getting drunk off tiny wines. I do believe she uploaded the video after the initial stream, but it was essentially 10 hours of uh, just her drinking tiny wines and slowly talking about her plans for the year. Let's make it happen this year. Well, yeah. So, I think my year is going to start off with daily streaming. Nothing too exciting, just kind of more the same for a while. On January 12th, we're going to get the Nintendo Switch presentation. Hey, it's Lily! And that'll be like kind of a talking point for a while, but um, they're still going to be a couple of months or two to later. And then proceeded to stream absolute nothingness for 10 hours. I skipped throughout the 10 hour plus stream. I got nothing of value from it. And I have limited time in my day, so next. The next day, Narcissa uploaded a video title, 10 days until Twitch presentation, which literally starts with Narcissa throwing Soylent bottles into a trash can. It really feels like a purposeful meme about soy confusion, but I'm not sure. The stream is the same thing as experienced since last year. Complaints? I want contradicting things from streaming. I just want to feel like it's all rent and not I want to feel like I'm making progress here. Boring self-exploration. I don't know how many times I just signal to everyone that... Hey, it's Gory! Like, freedom. But this time, with a twist, Narcissa is excited for the Switch. If you know of Switch pre-orders... See, I think I want to do it through Amazon. And I, are they going to be one of the big suppliers of it? Like, I don't know exactly how this works. I just want to make sure that I can get one on launch, because I think a lot of people kind of want one, so it's going to be, like, sold out maybe kind of fast. I really want to get it on launch. And then... I think Breath of the Wild's not going to be coming out on launch, but the moment I get the Switch, I'm going to be streaming the Switch. That'll be my new standard, I think, of my stream. But, of course, I can't just, like, grind constantly and game 24-7, so I'm going to need to, like, be a little bit pacing it, you know? Also, at one point, she brags that 600 people had watched her previously sleep on stream. You could say sleep on stream is not valuable, but I had 600 viewers. So, I don't know. Let's not get into the whole gaming content is the only way. The only form of content is when there's a video game on the screen. That's the only thing that's valuable for whatever fucking reason. Fuck that. And anytime the audience gives her advice, she responded negatively. And is just rude to her audience. 
can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hey, it's Masa. I wish I had love for all of you, but I actually hate you, and that's just kind of the way it is. She unironically says, content shaming is not okay when people were not happy with her. My existential f***ing freak out moments and my, my, all of this, all of this and the interaction between everyone watching and me, like all of this has no value, but me, like, me thing, like, What the fuck? Yeah, content shaming. I should just call people out on that. Hey, stop content shaming. Stop content shaming me. Yeah. You think it? She also throughout the stream claims that the new Zelda game will get her to 20,000 live viewers. If I don't get 20,000 viewers, I will forever be sad and dissatisfied with myself. I will never forgive myself for not acquiring 20,000 viewers. It's just delusion. She keeps doing nothing of interest, disrespecting her audience, and claiming she will be famous again. A few days later, Narcissa tweeted out on the 7th of January, Intense desire to succeed in a much larger way than I've ever done before, surpassing everything from my past. To which someone responded, Yeah, and tomorrow you'll be crying about something like you did. And Narcissa responded, Welcome to my mute list, fuck. She was so hopeful Breath of the Wild would bring her new success. Then, on the 13th of January, Narcissa posted a video reacting to the Breath of the Wild trailer titled Move to Tears, where her love for the beauty of the new Zelda game was well received, and there was breath of hope into her career. Sadly, this fresh air didn't last. Three days later, on the 16th, it was reported that Narcissa had a moment when she deleted many tweets and nobody knew why. But Narcissa remained optimistic about the Breath of the Wild release. And I found a live chat screen cap from around January 19th of her bragging about hey, the big and again. Awesome! She's gonna be when she played it. Narcissa's ego was growing large, and on January 29th, she said something very... Well, here's the clip. I'm gonna have to make some videos on my own channel. Hey, you fucking big fans. Fuck this shit. This one's fans in Zelda. That's right, the great man. I'm gonna worship you. She was most likely trying to instigate a reaction, but as you will see, I think in further, the reaction she wanted was eventually given, and her reaction to the reaction was not possible. Did that make sense? Anyway, the videos of Narcissa got more disturbing on February 11th, 2017. She posted a video of her working out, making disturbing faces, and memes were abound from the footage. Soon after, Narcissa streamed on Twitch a video of her sleeping, which is against Twitch Turns to Service. According to Kiwi Farm, she filmed herself for over 12 hours sleeping. On the 18th of February, Narcissa would fulfill one of her year goals, which was to begin the of her past speedrun. She reacted to two of her 2013 Zelda speedruns on this day for over six hours. The video was well received enough considering her previous video's voting ratio, which would show what her audience wanted. Gameplay commentary. Around February 20th, Narcissa had noticed that the subreddit, Sam and Toki, liked to talk about her and she asked her fans to brigade the subreddit. Three days later, on the 23rd, Narcissa posted a vlog where she talked about how people are being given permission to stream Breath of the Wild early from Nintendo, and how she deserved it more because she can not know about Zelda than anyone else. It actually does hurt a little bit. And I think people are going to know that I feel hurt by I think people are going to accept that because it's a little bit of a And I feel like I'm going to get one of the Switch early. And I'm actually still trying to get one early. There might actually still be a chance of me getting one. Oh, it's a little bit better. I'll talk on the record screen. Hey, it's Martin! I don't know if that'll actually come through. I might not. And, like, I can't help the way I feel about, like, the early switch thing. Like, that's just how I feel. 
Lunchtime, I guess. Mass conditions into Amiibo Twitch still preparing for shipment. I hear oh other people are fingers crossed. Narcissa was unable to stream her Zelda return, and the posters on SRG began to mock her. One yeah. person writes, Day yeah. Zero, no cross yeah. stream. I thought this was his day of resurrection. Another person responds, She isn't out of bed yet. Someone responds to that writing, Cosmo is a he, not a she. He is a man. Another commenter writes, Rip Cosmo, now that breath of the lab is completely hot garbage. And then one other person writes, Breath of the Tree. Narcissa did not get her Switch or game, and she tweeted out how she definitely deserved these things early. She writes, Also, I should have received an early Switch. I deserve it, and I don't care if you think I'm a spoiled, entitled brat. But it's okay. Narcissa would soon get her copy of Breath of the Wild, though, and start to play it on stream. The Rise arc wasn't as impressive as expected, and reports say Narcissa had around 500 live viewers versus her old number of thousands. After the underwhelming return to Zelda, Narcissa began to post to the same important subreddit in retaliation. She posted around the 13th of May. I wasn't friends with Stiff. I don't know shit about what happened. Please stop these threads about me and honor my request. I feel like crying. This subreddit has nothing to do with me, so deleting everything shouldn't be a problem. I am requesting that you do this, which would be beneficial to me, my stress levels, and my attitude. Just delete everything. No more Narcissa posting. Let it go. Easy. Done. Which post do I have a problem with? All of them. So, stop posting. And continue to comment throughout Sam and Tokyo. Right. Very pathetic attempt to try to control me. You know it's me. You're being an oblivious piece of shit on purpose. I see right through you. The only relevant question now is, will you honor my request or not? Stop posting about me. Maybe I made that and forgot the password. I don't remember. This is me, though. And I'm asking you to stop posting about me on this subreddit. Remove all discussion about me. Let me ghost and be gone from this place. Let me scream in peace and may the f***ing war that has raged on over the last year finally dissipate and resolve. Stop posting about me. The streams most likely continue for days, though I will admit I haven't looked through the thousands of hours of stream footage. But on the 20th of March, when Sissel made a thread with Sam and Toby, that basically turned into a Q&A between Narcy and the users of the subreddit. Narcissa eventually deleted the thread, then another user posted a screenshot of the thread, to which Narcissa responded, Sorry about that. On with the parade. Narcissa continued to receive positive coverage from gaming me, despite audiences not really feeling what she was putting out. And on March 23rd, she was featured in an article by Wired about gaming YouTubers who weren't racist. Narcissa continued to snap at people on Reddit up until the end of March, which was negatively received by all posters. And then around this time, Narcissa posted a super deep poem on her Discord. I am going to read the poem for you. When the cheat items fall from the yeah. sky, and Ganon goes down with the plus three attack. My name lights up in the minds of the masses. In the speed of dystopia, we argue, citing the Temple Tutor, the IQ player, for what they perceive as righteous ruling. But there is a growing unrest, speeding a schism on the horizon. Leaderboard justice now, separate categories now, blind to their own violence. War continues on, while one girl hey, it's Scarlet. The breakaway is speedy, becomes speedy. Finally, the grand decentralization of it all, a speed oh. awakening. Not only that, she was speedrunning Breath of the Wild still, and on March 30th, it was noted that she had dropped down in live viewers to under 200, and her current speedrun best was 5 hours, while other top speedrunners had Breath of the Wild completed in 43 minutes. April rolls around, and on April 6th, Narcissa had a very troubling stream on Twitch. The stream is no longer in existence, but someone on Kiwi Farms summarized it, writing, This clip of Cosmo having an emotional breakdown on stream just got posted to the same and Toby subreddit. It's pretty unpleasant to watch. For anyone that doesn't want to, or can't watch, or if Twitch deletes the clip, people were posting messages of advice and support in the chat. I didn't watch the stream, but I'm assuming that Cosmo asked for advice, or maybe the subject just came up without their input. Someone post in the chat, you need to sort things out with yourself. Narcy, that's the point. And that's easy to say, but incredibly difficult to do. Some soul searching might be in order. Cosmo seems to read this and react by saying, whilst their voice breaks, some soul searching might be in order. What do you think I've been doing over the last, like, three years? Like, what do you think I've been doing? Then they start crying. Narcissa's streaming got dark, and on April 11th, there were some tweets from Narcissa showing a lot of raw vulnerability. Well, in enough of Although her Twitch was on the time, I was able to find some clips from a way back machine. The first clip I found was her talking about her great chance 
This person needs 